Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Proactivity 2000 PLC Ladder Logic Timers. Timers are one of the first things you'll learn about programmable logic controllers, or PLC. Just about every PLC program will include timer instructions. The Proactivity 2000 series PLC has several different timer instructions for your program. We discussed the Time Coil, or TMC, and Flasher Coil, FLS, last time as part of the Ladder Logic Output discussion. We will now look at using the simple timer, STMR, and the timer, TMR instructions in the Proactivity Suite software. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. Timers are used in the majority of PLC programs. The implementation of timers can be vast. However, it all starts with a timing chart. We have covered timing charts in the post, the secret of using timers. Each post will have a corresponding YouTube video to help convey or show additional information. A timing diagram is a graphical method of showing the exact behavior of a logic circuit for every possible input condition. It is often used because of its visual nature to show what is happening instead of a wordy explanation. As Fred R. Bernard stated, a picture is worth 10,000 words. The timing diagram can either be on or off. This is represented on the timing diagram on the y-axis. Time is represented on the x-axis. In this timing diagram, the output is off when power is off. When power is on and a momentary start signal is received, a timer starts timing. At the end of the time duration, the output is turned on as long as the power remains on. If the power turns off, then the output also turns off. As you can see, it is visually easier to see the timing chart than just reading how it works. Please note that there are a wide variety of off-the-shelf industrial timers that you can use. A PLC can mimic any one of these timers easily. We will first use the simple timer STMR as an on-delay timer. So looking at my program here, I am connected online to the PLC. If I double click on this, I can see actually the instruction itself. And you will see that we're using a structure called STMR underscore on delay. And that sets up my present value, my current value, and my done bit. And I also have selected a time base rate of 0.01 seconds. And we're going to set the preset value to 1000, which will be 1000 times 0.01 seconds, which gives me 10 seconds. You can see that this instruction also shows you the delay uh, setting and the timing chart right on the instruction itself. In this case here, we are going to, we got selected the on delay timer. So we'll just hit okay for that. And that is our instruction. In order to see it in operation, let's just take a look at the data view which pulls up this right here and we will look at the structure itself um, STMR on delay and you can see my preset value here is set for 1000 my current value currently is zero because you can see my switch one here is off and my dumb bit is off as well because this is off so if we look back to our hardware here and we turn on the first switch. We can now see it timing up. And as soon as the timing up, according to the diagram is over, it turns on the output, which it exactly will do. Now, if I turn off that switch, then the output turns off. And so once again, turn the switch on. We have our timing and you can see in the timing chart how that works. As soon as it hits the set value, it turns the output on off of this uh, done bit. And then we can turn it back off. Our simple timer off delay timer will turn off the output bit after the time has expired. So let's take a look at that and we will turn 
this one off of our data view, turn this one on, and we will go down into the program where we can see our off delay timer. Here we go here. So if we call this up, we can see we're again using a structure and our STMR off delay here. And we're again, it's set for 0 0.01 seconds. We'll set it for 10 or 1000 um, as the preset value. So that means it'll be off for 10 seconds. You can see when I have my um, input here, um, it times for the time value of our 10 seconds and it turns off that output. So once my input turns on or my enable turns on, the output turns on. When I turn my enable off, the output then times out for that 10 seconds. So right now we can see that my output is now off. And so now let's go back to our hardware here. And we will actually turn on switch number two. And switch number two, as you can see, turns on output number two. And when we turn off switch number two, we can see now the timing has started and it'll go through 10 seconds. And we're expecting that this off delay now will turn off, which it does. And the output then turns off. Let's try that again. Output number two turns on with that switch number two. And when I turn it off, we get our off delay now of 10 seconds before the actual output turns off. We can see this clearly in that timing chart or timing diagram. The timer TMR will accumulate a duration of time, delay a process or time down from a specific value. So let's take a look at it now and we'll close this off delay, open up the timer and we will move that down a little bit as well as look at our actual timer instruction. So we actually have three inputs to this timer. We have switch number three, which times up, switch number four times down and we have switch number five resets, which brings the reset value back into that counter. Now, on the output side, we have three bits as well. We have an equal, less, or greater bit that will actually trigger the output for us. So let's take a look at the instruction itself. And you can see that we are using a structure, TMR, and that gives us our preset value, which we will set for 20 seconds, time base rate right here. And then we'll re reset to value, is our reset value, in this case here, we'll use zero. Our current value, which is the current value in the timer right now, are equal to less than and greater than bits that will be triggered based on this timer. So that is the structure of our timer itself. So if we look at our data view here, we can see that. And if we look down a little bit, let me just turn those bits down and you can see that our program itself, let me turn this over. You can see that our program itself, we can see that we have our equal to, less than, and greater than bits located right here. And we can watch them actually trigger. So the first thing we will do is try our up count. Currently right now you see our, our set value is set at five. So switch number three. Switch number three turns on and you can see that our value is actually timing up. Switch number four controls my down and you'll notice that once I turn my down on it stops you up because both the signals are are on let's turn off switch number three and you will actually see it now start count down so let's count back up again turn off four turn on three and we're going to count up and you can see once we equal this then the equal will actually turn on. It'll be on for one second, and then it'll start going greater because our input's still on, which then triggers our greater than, which is exactly what we expect. We turn that off now, and we will turn on our down. 
and it is now going down. And you will see again, it's same thing since supplies it equals, then we go less than. Turn that off and it stops counting. So again, if we hit the reset, then the reset value will now go in, which is zero, which then zeroes it back out on our timer. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.